The liberation mandate is what we refer to as the Commission, because that was where everything began. It was delivered on a most dramatic and awesome platform. On May 1st, 1981, I travelled to two towns in the southwest of Nigeria. My mission was to check up on two sets of friends who were both young couples because I had not heard from them in a while. However, when I got to the second location, which was Elisha, I found a note on the door with the words, Away for the weekend. Rather than being disappointed, I said, All things work together for good to the advantage of them that love the Lord. Then the Holy Spirit said to me, Seek a quiet place. I want to talk with you. That was a timely instruction because I had quite a few other friends in that town that I would have visited and had a good time with. However, I obeyed the voice of the Holy Spirit and asked a passerby if there was any hotel in the outskirts of the town where I could lodge. That was how I met with destiny. The quiet place I found was one international hotel, Elisha. Behold, as I knelt down to give thanks in the room, an encounter began that lasted for 18 hours. In that great vision, I saw a lineup of the afflicted and oppressed, broken, beaten, battered, the blind, the lame, and the wretched. I saw all kinds of deformities, and I was greatly bewildered. I heard their wailing as they filed past me. Their groaning was so intense that I could almost feel their pains. I began to cry and sob along with them. Lord, what is this? I asked. I heard God say to me, and from the beginning it was not so. I broke down the moor in tears. In the midst of all that, I kept asking, But why, Lord? And I heard God say distinctly to me, But from the beginning it was not so. And now the hour has come to liberate the world from all oppressions of the devil. Through the preaching of the word of faith, and I am sending you to undertake this task. I rose from the 18-hour vision fully persuaded of God's call upon my life into the ministry. That was how I received the liberation mandate. Having received the call to the ministry in 1981, precisely May 1st and 2nd, immediately he began to share the vision with people he believed that are like minds and the people who were counted a privilege to follow him in the journey. And I remember precisely, um, not many days after I received the vision, the fellowship began that is called Faith Liberation Hour, there in Elore, with a handful of people. Um, and shortly after that, the powerhouse, which is made up of 70 people, has uh, begun to, uh, under his leadership, began to have times of prayer and fasting. And of course, with um, meetings, special meetings of two, three days, holding at different places around Kwarade. Now, that went on for upward of 28 months after which the ministry was formally inaugurated September 17th, 1983. In preparation for entry into full-time ministry, God spoke to his servant. I will not have you go like others have gone. I will have hands laid on you 
so you can be filled with the spirit of wisdom. Send for my servant Adeboye, and I will have him lay hands on you, and you shall be filled with the spirit of wisdom. Though the two men had never met before that encounter, God made good his word. And so, on the 17th of September 1983, Pastor E.A. Adeboye of the Redeemed Christian Church of God was on hand to officiate the commissioning service, speaking prophetically into the future of the ministry. I've come to understand very clearly he's a man that hears from God. At the time, I was um, feeling a pull towards going to Kaduna, work then in Kuala State in Elorin. And I asked my wife that we should pray and find out what exactly is God saying. When the ministry was to move from Elorin in Kuala State to the north, for instance, both of us were praying. I can never forget. I still have the mental picture of where we were at that point in time. We were praying, asking God, are we to move from Kuala State to Kaduna or stay back here? The number of people we have in Elorin was far more than Kaduna. So there's no natural way to even feel a pull towards that place. But I could feel that pull. And then the Lord said to me, while we were praying in the morning, stand up, take your Bible. And I believe he opened it because I didn't flip any scripture. And I saw that scripture just popped out of the pages of scriptures, saying, and I said, Lord, what shall I do? And the Lord said, arise, get down to Damascus. So I told my wife, God, I just sent an answer. I was still busy praying when he stood up, opened his Bible, and tapped me and said, Prayer answered. God says to go. Acts 22, 10. Acts chapter 22, verse 10. That's how we had our move to Kaduna. On the 24th of April, 1987, during the Easter convention in Kaduna, God's servant, Bishop David Oyedebo, received the first church planting mandate with the Spirit of the Lord saying, It is time to spread out. By May 1987, a month later, five new churches were planted in northern Nigerian cities of Meduguri, Biu, Bochi, Azari, and Mubi. In the early morning of July 19th, 1989, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to his servant, Arise, get down to Lagos and raise me a people. On that same day, a member of staff was sent to Lagos to secure all the facilities required for the takeoff of the Lagos Church. The birth of the Lagos Church was preceded by a four-day seminar which culminated in the first Sunday service on the 24th of September 1989 with about 300 people in attendance. Breakthrough seminars were held between 1990 and 1993. It was an outreach program which took place in hotel facilities in Lagos. However, in December 1993, the Lord commanded that the breakthrough seminars be turned into breakthrough nights. The secret of the church growth explosion is traceable to the breakthrough nights. The Lagos church grew rapidly, from 3,000 to 10,000 in 1994, from 10,000 to 19,000 in 1995. In 1996, attendance shot up to 29,000. By 1997, the number of worshippers had increased to 35,000. And by 1998, the church in Lagos was up to 41,000. In 1999, with five services being held, 50,000 people were counted on a particular Sunday. Then came the move to Canaan land. On the 21st of December, 1995, the Spirit of the Lord said to Bishop David Oyedebo, 
I will yet relocate my church to her Rehoboth, a place of her enlargement. With the grace for prompt response to divine direction, the church began. Canaan land is indeed God's appointed place for this global ministry, and it shows. Ever since, the Living Faith Church Worldwide has executed several landmark church planting drives. There was the Africa Gospel Invasion Program, Ajib, where God told his servant, The harvest of Africa is now overripe. Rush in and preserve it from decadence. This is what drove the liberation mandate into the rest of the continent. Today, the mandate is well represented in well over 40 African nations with huge followership to the glory of God. More recently, in the year 2019, the church embarked on the planting of 5,000 rural churches in one calendar year, a feat which until then had never been attempted before as a commission. By the end of that year, it was a done deal. Then came the year 2020, a year which saw the whole world under the siege of a pandemic that literally shut down normal human activities. Yet, the God who gave the mandate in the first place directed and executed the planting of over 10,000 new churches in Nigeria alone and over a thousand new churches across other nations of the world. I had an encounter with the person of the Holy Spirit as I was reading a book titled The Purpose of Pentecost by the world-renowned evangelist T.L. Osborne. I read the book from cover to cover in one sitting, and for the first time ever, I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit audibly in a most dramatic fashion. I discovered from that book that the Holy Spirit is neither a thing nor a feeling, but a person who speaks guides and shows us things to come. I went to Kenneth Hagen's convention in Tulsa, Oklahoma in 1986, desperate for an encounter with the spirit of faith at work in the man of God, having been his student since 1976, largely through his books and continuous inspiration from the Word of Faith magazine. Coupled with the fact that I have the Word of Faith mandate. I saw the ministry as a role model and I committed myself to draw from him. On that trip, my heart cry was, whatever makes Hagen Hagen, I want it. In the afternoon session at the convention, my heart was focused on God and on his servant as he ministered. Suddenly, I saw his face transfigured, and it became like the face of a little baby. I saw anointing oil as it were dripping down his cheeks, and at that moment, something electric was fired into my being. I began to sob uncontrollably. In the course of this sobbing, the Lord said to me, My son David, the baton has been passed over to you. Today, by the grace of God, I am holding the baton of the word of faith to my generation with proofs for the world to see. On the 5th of February, 1986, the Lord spoke to me, saying, Arise and get down to Benin and meet with my servant. On the 6th, I took off. It was a result of that visit to Archbishop Benson Idahosa that I contacted the spirit of boldness. 
In my quest to find the secret of prosperity, I took two books titled The Laws of Prosperity by Kenneth Copeland and God's Will is Prosperity by Gloria Copeland. As I studied those materials and the Bible, light broke forth from Deuteronomy 8.18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore unto thy fathers, as it is this day. And the Lord said to me, My prosperity plan is not a promise. It does not answer to prayer. It is not a promise. It has no respect for fasting. It is a covenant. Until your part is played, I am not committed. Hmm. That means, as long as I play my part by keeping the covenant, I have a guarantee of prosperity. Realizing this, I jumped up, spun around and exclaimed, Yeah! I can never be poor. That encounter marked a new dawn in my life. The Publishing Mandate On February 14, 1983, while reading a magazine called New Wine, God spoke clearly to his servant. The words that I put in your mouth, the same commit into writing, and I will cause the same unction on the spoken word to rest on the written word, bringing about the same effect. Consequently, the first two books authored by Dr. David Oyedepo were published in 1985, The Law of Faith and The Miracle Seed. Today, the Dominion Publishing House has its presence in several nations, with books published in over 30 languages and over 150 titles, with millions of copies in circulation around the world. Even Bibles are being printed to excellent specifications today at the Dominion Publishing House. The Training Arm On one of those days of waiting on the Lord in May 1983, God's voice again came through to Dr. David Oyedepo saying, I will, through this ministry, raise the foundation of many other ministries. Preparation began by the last quarter of 1985, but the school, the Word of Faith Bible Institute, WAFB, began with evening classes started officially on the 1st of September 1986. Like Abraham, who trained his army for conquest, the Word of Faith Bible Institute has produced hundreds of thousands of graduates across the world, not only in pulpit ministry, but in all areas of human endeavor. The Educational Arm The liberation mandate over the years has been a clear proof that wherever the gospel of Jesus Christ goes, true civilization and corresponding development follow. Through its visionary pursuits and drive, the Commission has been at the forefront of a revolution through education on the African educational landscape. Then came the founding of Covenant University on October 21, 2002, with over 1,500 pioneer students. A second university, Landmark University, 
was founded by the Commission in the year 2011. Today, Landmark University enjoys the influx of a sizable number of international students from across Africa, charting new courses in the agricultural landscape, as well as releasing global leaders in their various fields of endeavor. In January 2021, the Webometric Ranking of Universities across the world was released. Covenant University emerged as the second. And Landmark University emerged as the ninth out of all 262 federal, state and private universities in Nigeria. Consequently, Covenant University and Landmark University emerged as the first and second private universities in Nigeria, respectively. More recently, in April 2021, Covenant University was rated number one in Nigeria, according to the Times Higher Education Global Impact Ranking. Year in, year out, new records are created, stereotypes are shattered, and the vision for a continent that can no longer be regarded as the dark continent becomes clearer through the indelible marks of the liberation mandate. The Humanitarian Arm The cardinal purpose of the Gospel is to most importantly engender the welfare of the people like Jesus Christ stated in Matthew chapter 25. It is for the Church to rise in defense of the people when distracted as well as help the society transit successfully in its stages of development. The Living Faith Church, through the World Mission Agency, has never shied away from rising up to the needs of the people when challenged, particularly in healthcare interventions and disaster management. By giving scholarships and grants to indigent students, meeting orphanage homes, Dr. David Oyedepo, has personally been involved in humanitarian efforts through the David Oyedepo Foundation. Global Impact of the Commission Today in the year 2021, 40 years later, there is a tangible, impactful and physical manifestation of the liberation mandate in at least five continents of the world. On the 2nd of May, God came down to me. I, the God of wonder, double, is visiting you. Sir, in seven weeks you are doubled. In that season, one Sunday we increased by 28,500. Another Sunday, 33,000 plus. Another Sunday, 48,000 plus over the previous. We are in a revival. Some time ago, God spoke to his servant, saying, The only scientific way to grow a big body is by replication of the cells of that body. In the same vein, the only way to grow a great congregation can only be by the rate of replication of the cells. The Winners Satellite Fellowship, WSF, is one of the platforms for church growth in this commission. Via this home cell system, spiritual, emotional and physical care are constantly reviewed and enhanced for adequate attention and covering for members. As the cells keep growing, the main church is also growing. In February 2021, a cell growth and replication drive was flagged off and within 10 weeks, over 10,000 new home cells were planted, all to the glory of God. Indeed, the word of faith preached is being confirmed across the nations of the earth with signs, wonders, and life-changing testimonies of God's grace and glory. 
God is still opening new chapters in the journey of this great commission. He keeps opening new chapters. He keeps opening new chapters. For instance, he will build a church that sees 50,000 at the base of this ministry. He did. And then there was a clean noggin of the Holy Spirit that he wants to do something else. Amen. And now we are embarking on a 100,000 seed sanctuary. When he said it will be 50,000, you will think that he has put a ceiling of 50,000 people only in the church. Now he filled it once, he filled it twice, he filled it three times. So uh, it's a destiny of no limits. There, is, there are no ceilings on the destiny of the believer. There are no ceilings. People don't know that. As long as you keep following, he keeps changing your level, he keeps changing the level of his church. And he won't stop doing that until you stop following. When you stop following, just like when you withdraw your service from any organization, you stop getting paid. Free benefits cease. But as long as you are on it and you are in it, you find your level changing. You find yourself being listed among candidates for promotion. You are going up because you are in service. Year in, year out, having witnessed the groundbreaking and subsequent commissioning of signature projects across the length and breadth of Nigeria, Africa, and the world at large, we are about to see the unveiling of the Legacy Project, the 100,000-seat capacity sanctuary, the Ark. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our sight. To him alone be all the glory. <laughs>